Okay, cool, man. All right, I guess we're in it. So, how are you doing today? Good, actually. What's the yeah, What's yeah. the weather like? Um, drab. Drab. Gray and a bit of rain sometimes. That's good. So, rain makes mushrooms. Yeah. Ray makes mushrooms. It does. We <laughs> had lots of uh, lots of uh, uh, drought in the past few weeks. Lots of heat. Yeah. So the, I think these rains are going to bring out the mushrooms. Good. Awesome. Back again. Awesome. Yeah. So um, okay, uh, is it Mich should I say Michelle or Michael? Uh, whatever you want. It's it's officially it's Michelle. I've been saying Michelle for a while. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Good. Cool. Good. So. Um, I wanted to do an interview with you. I've been wanting to interview you for a while because I see you're very active in the Facebook groups, and yeah. um, and you're a really nice guy and you're really helpful to people, which which I value. I think it's really important because a lot of people are quick to, you know, they're quick to be offended when they're wrong or just people on the internet get offended real quickly and easily. And you're you're always there to nip that in the bud. I appreciate that. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. So, what got you into mushrooms? general question um this it's a um a memory game i got when i was two years old okay maybe earlier but when i was two years old i asked my parents what this thing was wow so, really yeah and then they showed me a um uh agaricus uh, what's it called again? Uh, button mushroom. Agaricus? The, uh, yeah, Agaricus uh, bisplois. Okay. And, and they showed it uh, to me from the from the uh, refrigerator. But I said it's not the same. Because that one has a white cap and that <laughs> one has a brown cap. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So uh, my parents had to take me out to, uh, to the woods to look for this exact mushroom. Ah, okay. And uh, because they didn't have any idea what kind of mushrooms we would uh, uh, we would find, they had to buy books. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got I got so obsessed with these things that they had to read from the books every day and and I would take the books everywhere I go. Yeah. Wow. So so, yeah, so they actually they helped you like get into it. They took you out to the woods and did they yeah. buy books for you? Yeah. Did. Wow, is there so? Is there a, a more of a culture over there, and is there less mycophobia? Would you say? No, actually, actually, in all of Europe, um, uh, England and or, or actually the UK and uh, the Netherlands are the two mycophobic countries. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. the rest of, of uh, Europe is more traditionally uh, picking mushrooms, and it goes on from generation to generation. Okay, awesome. So it's, Interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it's quite weird that, that I got this uh, uh, obsession. Yeah, yeah, I get you. It is a weird one, and I'm sure we all, we all are used to getting funny looks from our friends when we tell them that we're into <laughs> mushrooms. And, and, you know, they only assume one or two things is that we're trying to get high or, or something else. It's, it's, yep. uh, uh, so I know we're all used to that. Um, I guess that was one of my questions. Um, is there a, uh, what kind of reactions do you get from people when you tell them what you're into? Yeah, it's, it's um, either, oh, shrooms, ha, 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 so the, the funny thing. Yeah. Um, or they sing uh, a song about, uh, um, how do you call that, a leprechaun on a mushroom. We have a Dutch song. Uh, op een grote paddenstoel, rood met witte stippen. It's about Amanita muscaria. Ah. And um, uh, so, so that's their association with with mushrooms. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, or or they ask me about uh, edible mushrooms. Yeah. So it's it's one of those three things, and and they're pretty um, uh, surprised when I tell them about what actually lies behind my obsession, right? So what I really do with mushrooms, and it, they get what is interested. that? Um, well, that uh, that I actually study mushrooms more in a in a much broader sense, and not only edibles or toxic mushrooms or uh, psychedelic mushrooms. Right. So it's 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 really the the entire thing about mushrooms. 
Gotcha. That I like. Yeah. yeah, and people can't seem to grasp that. I I, I know what you mean. Hmm. So, um, what is that song about? Um, by the way, the leprechaun. Um. What hap uh, What happens? Uh, he sits on a mushroom, and he is jiggling, uh, back and forth. Uh huh. And uh, another leprechaun says to him, uh, "Watch out, or you will fall." And then at the end of the song, the the other one does fall from the from the mushroom. Okay, that's it. That's the yeah, end. That's it. <laughs> that's cute. That's cute. Okay. Um. Next question. How often do you actually go out and hunt mushrooms? Um. Every time I go out, actually, I look for mushrooms, and um. About twice or three times a week, when it's uh, when it's more calm, and uh, almost every day when uh, when it's uh, when it's often. Do so, you, do you uh, stare at the like when you're driving or on a bike? Do you, are you are you always looking yeah. at the size? <laughs> yeah, uh, always. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay. <laughs> um. So I think this one I wanted to ask for the listeners. Um. So a lot of people when they are getting just getting into mushrooms, they don't know where to start. So mm -hmm. what would you suggest? to help out people who are just trying to learn about mushrooms? Uh, good who are, question. Who are just starting out? I would say buy lots and lots of books. Try to get your hands on any book you can get. And um, because that's the way I started out, and I think that's a good way to start because you have... Uh, uh, with lots and lots of books, you can uh, compare photos and you can compare descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, via that way, you can uh, learn more about the variability of a species and of a genus. Um, and it often has a, a, a couple of uh, chapters about how to. Uh, uh, how to identify or uh, where to look for mushrooms and all kinds of uh, more common knowledge, more general knowledge things. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also suggest to go to uh, forays, just connect with people yeah. in the neighborhood yeah. and uh, take uh, uh, go on forays just to learn from people in the field. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think those are the, the two best ways to start learning. Um, I do yeah. hear one thing from people. Some people want to say that um, that buying books, uh, you might be better off just learning on the internet. I know some people say that. And some people mm -hmm. say the books are just simply outdated. So um, I still per I still think there's, there's value. So if you could just explain a little um, about what kind of value is still remains in outdated books. Um. Well, the names change, but the descriptions do not change. That's that's one thing. Um, and the value of books really is that you can just grab a book and scroll through it. You don't need the computer or you don't need uh, your phone or anything. And it, it uh, at least to me, it feels much um, much more real. Yeah, I sure, guess. sure. When I scroll through a book. And I can lay two or three books next to each other and then compare everything that I need. Um, also, books are great references because the people who uh, uh, were mycologists before us were the guys who either wrote the books or used the books, learned from those books. So it's always good to have that bit of um, uh, historic sense I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That makes a lot of sense. I appreciate that. All right, cool. moving on. Um, so we talked about books, but what are some lesser known resources that you use to study fungi? So hmm. resources that, um, I don't know, whether it's a website or uh, something else you didn't mention, what, what's a lesser known hmm. resource that you use? I, I use tons and tons of websites and tons and tons of, of um, uh, Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm practically in, in almost all of the <laughs> bigger Facebook pages yeah. Yeah. and um, a couple of local things and stuff. Um, but furthermore, yeah, I don't know. I use books, um, internet, yeah, people. Okay. So uh, my colleges that I know, mm -hmm. um, they, they, I, I'm in contact with them via email or, or just via uh, 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 via get-togethers or anything. Okay, yeah. So that kind of goes back to actually going to forays and meeting people yeah. who are yeah. already doing the mushroom thing. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Love it. So, um, okay, uh, what do you do in the winter when there's uh, a lack of fungi? <laughs> Um, I make music as well, as you can see. Yeah, um, this guy's really good, to, just for the listeners. This, you got to hear this guy play guitar. I'll probably link him up in some notes or whatever. But yeah, Michelle Beekman is a amazing guitar player. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in the winter, I, I usually just scroll through my books and uh, work on collections, uh, herbarium collections that I have. Uh, just to keep them out or things that I didn't uh, that I couldn't identify before I uh, or when I got them actually uh, so just simply doing more the administrative stuff I guess how do you uh, store them how, how do you uh, I yeah. dry them and uh, I keep them dry in Ziploc bags with uh, uh, with a, a kind of voucher card actually Cool. Just with the basic information and stuff. Yeah. And then um, most of the information is, is in a in a list on my uh, my computer. Cool. So yeah. Awesome. Okay, what else we got here? Um, okay, is there a mushroom you haven't found that you would like to that you're looking for? Oh, plenty. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, there. Um, one of them is, is uh, Heliosia sulcata. That's the, the small um, gilt polypore that grows on on um, uh, uh, on fences. Yeah. So it's, it, okay. It, it's it's that very tiny one that doesn't grow bigger than one one and a half centimeter. Mm -hmm. um, I did get a, a collection uh, from Jared. Uh, he sent it to me. McCray? But I still want to see it in, in real life, living on a fence, you know? Yeah, got yeah. you. Wait, so I didn't. I remember seeing that on Facebook. Um, so mm -hmm. they, they're they known to grow on fences solely or just commonly? Oh, on, on, on more uh, more kinds of woods. But, but um, they're they all... are often found on fences. Okay, I didn't know that. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I enjoy that. All right. Um... So we're at 15 minutes here. I think that's all the questions I, I laid out. Pretty short and sweet. Cool. And I appreciate your time. Um, so if uh, so, you make you make music. You're not just a mushroom identifier. No, that's true. But uh, what's your band's name? Sunfire. Sunfire. And you have a Facebook page and whatnot. Yes. Everything. Okay. You can find it via my page or just. Um, uh, look for Sunfire on Facebook and on Google. Okay. Yep. Or add this guy on Instagram because uh, he also publishes his music there. Yep, I, also. I do enjoy those 15, 20 second segments. They're really nice. Awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate your time. Um, maybe we can uh, do this again later down the road. I had fun. I hope you did too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to finally Thank meet you. you after all this time, man. Yeah, right back at you. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Well, uh, feel free to hit me up in the DM whenever. Cool. And I'll talk we'll to you later. Cheers. Cheers, Michelle. Take care. Thank you. Recording. Okay, cool. How's that? Yeah, it's cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, I appreciate you joining me again. Um, yeah, no problem, man. I, I feel silly for not even going over like your claim to fame on social media which is why everybody tags you is uh, um, especially just in particular ink caps you are the ink cap master that's how people know you yeah. so um, if you would like just go into a little bit about why copernoids why copernoids um, 
I think the the love for copyrights uh, copyrights started when I met um, Kesel Ye. He was one of the the um, well, the leading experts on copyrights, and uh, luckily he lived in the in the Netherlands. Cool. And um, he was actually one of the first people who I got to know in the in the um, uh, in the how do you say that in the professional mycological world. Ah, I see. Okay. So he was kind of a mentor to me. And um, after that, it, just, it it slipped away, and and I got more into Amanita and all the bigger stuff. And then, so copernoids were the catalyst for um, um, getting into deeper identification for you. Yeah, yeah, cool. eventually. Um, uh, especially in the in the past few years, I began to notice that um, there are m way more copernoids than um, uh, than people write down in checklists, for example, or during forays. Um, and uh, I got into uh, section micase, so that's the the uh, glistening ink caps or mic caps, however you want to call them. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that there are actually four species that look very much alike. And um, actually, everybody calls them glistening ink caps or mica caps, and then be done with it. Yeah. But I was I was. Um, Getting frustrated, actually, uh, because it didn't seem right to me. Some spe some some collections looked a little different than the other, and I thought maybe we should take this a level up and actually look at them through the microscope and really uh, uh, really try to identify the the, the mushroom. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so so I started to uh, to gain some some uh, uh, keys and literature about copernoids, and I, I gained far more interest and, and knowledge about copernoids, and I started to share these things. So um, yeah. let me ask you a question: uh, in the Copernella section Micacea, mm -hmm. um, what what people want to call mica caps or ink caps? Um, yeah. the glistening ink caps. Um, how many other species, um, you know, are, can can be called commonly called mica caps? Uh, right now, I believe there are about. Uh, let me see. I've got the key here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, about seven species, I believe. Okay. Uh, that we call mica caps, or actually, there are. Five species that we call mica caps. Um, yes, one, two, three, four, five, and two species that are um, actually called the the trooping crumble caps. That's uh, Coprinellus disseminatus. So that's the the tiny ones that grows in, in, in huge numbers. And they don't turn to ink, do they? Um, do they deliquesce? Not really. Not really. If it's really wet, then then they do. Okay. But they they more or less shrivel up. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, but the morphology on on um, on macro scale and on microscopic scale are very similar to that of uh, other species from section Micaceae. Um So there are two species that um, that are very tiny, and we uh, we can call like trooping crumble caps and uh, four species or five species actually that uh, that we call mica caps very cool very cool I think that's yeah. really useful information for people to know yeah absolutely um, okay so we kind of already went over um, a little bit so you mentioned your mentor I was gonna ask who who mentored you in copernoids was there anybody else other than that name you mentioned which I will not try to pronounce <laughs> Case oh yeah. Um not not particularly in copernoids, actually later in life, so in, in the past year actually or past few years that I gained more people that are knowledgeable in, in copernoids. Um so Andreas Meltzer from the key. Okay. And um uh, Jos Folders, he's a Flemish guy. 
who also did work on, on Copernoid and a couple of more people uh, who I got to know. Um, but for the other mentors in, in earlier life were uh, Magiel Nordloos. Uh, he is one of the uh, more famous guys actually in mycology uh, because of his work in um, Antoloma and in the Bolides and in the uh, Marasme Seye. Yeah, I think I've definitely so seen the, that name around. In, yeah. And um, uh, the other person who was, who was really um, one of the, the bigger names, the, the bigger guys in my, uh, in my earlier years uh, was uh, Kees Bas. And Kees Bas is, uh, uh, was, he, uh, he passed away, sadly. Mm. Um, he was the, uh, the big Amanita guy. So the webpage amanitasee.org. That's right. I wrote him. His boss. That's yes. That's his. Uh, that was his mentor as well. Oh, and, um, uh, uh, you mean um, uh, Rodham Rod, Tulos? Rodham Tulos. Yeah, that's his mentor. Yes. Boss. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, Case was actually one of the one of uh, really one of the first people who uh, who I met in the in the uh, professional circles interesting very interesting yeah. and well i'll probably get to you later about posting all those names in the notes for later so we can sure sure link them up um so moving on here um can you speak on the um copernoids that react with alcohol yeah um there's a group in uh, one of the four genera uh, genera uh, called coprinopsis <clears throat> And um, within that group, there is a subsection. So that's a, a, a very small group of, of species with very similar traits, also genetically. Um, and this is the sec subsection Atramentari. And this is the, the group called the alcohol inkies. Uh -huh. And uh, these inkies um, contain the, the compound coprine and benzocoprine and it's kind of a disulfiram like um, compound which is the active substance in antabuse and that's uh, the medicine that's used um, to help alcoholics stop their drinking habit huh very interesting yeah gotcha and but what it does is it uh, i don't know exactly how it works but it, it reacts with alcohol and makes you feel really really sick so um, when you eat these mushrooms uh, Coprinopsis atramentaria the alcohol inky or Coprinopsis varicata or uh, Romagnesiana one of those species it's about 13 or 14 species I believe um, and you combine that with alcohol, then you get really, really ill. Okay, and you, you mentioned a substance that actually helps alcoholics get off of alcohol. Is it the same substance, yep. the coprine? Um, it's very similar. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it, it, it reacts the, uh, the same way. So I believe it, it, it's kind of like the same structure, molecularly. Okay. Okay, great. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, I think got a couple more questions um, is there a Dutch word for them for copnoids yeah yeah well how inkt do you ink swammen yeah inked swammen okay it's it's really trans uh, inked uh, inky mushrooms yeah, I mean yeah easy enough I wouldn't suspect that um, yeah. <laughs> can it be can it be confusing uh, just learning the English taxons along with Dutch taxons? Does, does Dutch have a completely different um, taxonomy language? No, no, no. It's, it's, uh, since we all use uh, scientific names, uh, the taxonomy is universally the same. Uh, the Latin? The Latin, yeah. Uh, or Greek or whatever it is. So we call it scientific names. Right. Okay. Uh, so in, in, in that sense, it's, it's not 
any different here than in the States or in India or wherever you are on, on the planet. Okay, so the Dutch name you just gave me was a common name? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, I think I've seen a couple of you uh, Dutch people online talk about it, and you know, I always have to press C translation on on Facebook <laughs> um, just to know what you guys are talking about. I think it's funny. Yeah. Um, Did it work? Oh, uh, sometimes. Well, Facebook translate. This is Facebook yeah, translation. Yeah, Facebook translate. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Um, all right. I think that's all I uh, wrote down just in like five minutes. Is there anything else about uh, copernoids that you'd like to mention for people to learn? Um, or common misconceptions about it or anything? Well, uh, yeah, one of the common misconceptions is, is that all the copernoids uh, uh, are uh, uh, poisonous or, or uh, are incompatible with alcohol, but that's not true. It's only that subsection, um, so that 13, 14, maybe a couple of more species um, of subsection atramentari that are poisonous in combination with alcohol. Is it Copernopsis subsection yeah. atramentari? Yes. Okay. So there's 14 um, different Copernopsis yeah. that are that react with uh, alcohol. Well, exactly. Okay. 14 different Copernopsis that react with alcohol. Yeah. All the other Copernopsis. Uh, and also all the other Coprinellus and Parasola and the entire genus of Coprinus, so the, the uh, shaggy mane and its relatives, are all compatible with alcohol. Cool. Because they do, do not contain Coprin and Benzocoprin. Yeah, I see a lot of people who just say, oh, I stay completely away from ink caps because, um, you know, I drink alcohol or something and I want to mix the two. But really, yeah. it, just because it looks like an ink cap, um, you know, you can't stop there. You should really learn uh, or try to whittle it down and see if it is in section atramentaria before you eat it. And yeah, exactly. Again, if, if you equip yourself with knowledge, then you really don't have to fear, you know, eating anything because you can feel comfortable.